All right. Last time, Jimmy talked briefly about uh, row store indexes. So I figured I'd round out the talk with uh, column store indexes. So I'm Gene Poole. I picked up a couple Microsoft certifications on databases because I was a programmer who kept having trouble with the data tier. So cracked some books and dug around a little bit. And it was actually while working on the data management and analytics, I ran into the clustered column store index. And in SQL Server 2012, you could actually only have non-clustered column stores on a table. But in 2014, they added the option to make it a clustered. So when you apply the clustered column store index to your table, it actually changes the way the data is stored on disk. And in a traditional row store, you have your page leaf, and it has individual records one after another in that page leaf. In a column store index, it turns that on its side, and your extent has just a single column in it. And that record will be spread across multiple pages with just a single column in each extent. And the reason that you do that is because when you look at a lot of columns, you'll see repeating data in it. So let's say you're storing your state. You should probably only see about 50 of those. So that gives you a real opportunity to compress that data. So instead of storing Oklahoma, you can replace that with the number one. And Microsoft says they generally see about a 10x reduction in data size. And that generally holds fairly true with most columns. So you put it on its side and you've compressed the data. What that is great for is now if you need to do an average or a sum on a single column, it is really fast because you hop to that one page and all the data you need for that column is right there. Now the drawback to a column store is if you want a single record, now you've got the same problem that you had going the other way because you have to open up several pages to get drilled down to that single column to put together that single row. And you'll notice that there's also a delta store on here. Since the data is compressed when it's sitting in the row store, it's really inefficient to every time you insert a new row to go through and recompress each of those columns. So what it does is it inserts the new row into the delta store and the minimum number of rows it'll convert from the delta store into the column store is 102,400 and the maximum size is two to the 20th, so 1,048,576 rows. So when the RDBMS hits that limit, it'll mark the Delta store is closed and there's a tuple mover that'll come through and it will take that Delta store and it will grab each column and convert it into the column store. And when you start digging around on these things, you'll see that there's usually several Delta stores, especially on a hot table, which you really don't want hot data in a column store because it's expensive to move in and out. But if there are lots of reads and writes going on, if the relational database system hits a lock while it's trying to insert, it will open up a new Delta store. And I haven't found a hard limit on that, which is kind of fun if you're trying to mess up SQL Server. Uh, so when you'd want to use it. For a row store, the best time to use it is when you're looking for a single row or a small selection of rows. While with column store, since if you're running an average or sum on a single column, that's the time you want to use it, is when most of your queries look like that. Uh, when I was first digging around on column store indexes, I was getting really confused because it seemed like there's a lot of conflicting information out there. And it turns out that when column store was first pushed into SQL Server, which it was Vertipack or X Velocity was what it was called, uh, it was, you could only have a non-clustered and it was read-only in SQL Server 2012. But you got some really nice updates in 2014. So when you're reading about the limitations of a column store, such as you can only have 1,024 columns, check the version they're talking about. Because by SQL Server 2016, you had a lot of options and it was a really nice update for column stores and made them really useful. 
especially this top one here, since you can have a non-clustered column store index that's updatable. So you can have the bulk of your data in a regular row store. And if there's one or two or even half a dozen columns that you regularly run aggregate functions on for reporting, you could create a non-clustered column store index on just those columns. And that's all I got for you.